I've covered many of the basics about cholesterol on this channel, but there are some really important things that as a dietitian, I want you to know, and they don't fit into the traditional advice. If you're new here, I'm Maria and I'm a registered dietitian. Welcome to the channel. Now, my first point is a little bit grim, but it's number one because it's important and it has nothing to do with diet. It's that women present differently for a heart attack than men. And many of us are not aware of this. We've all seen the movies where a man gasps, clutches his chest and then falls to the ground. But in reality, a heart attack victim could easily be a woman and the scene may look a bit different. As with men, women's most common heart attack symptom is still chest pain or discomfort. However, women may experience other symptoms that are typically less associated with a heart attack, such as shortness of breath, sweating, nausea, vomiting, reflux, back or jaw and throat pain. Women also tend to be less likely to get medical help and treatment quickly, despite the warning signs. An early treatment is essential to limit the amount of damage to the heart. Now, the next thing is that cholesterol is only one risk factor for cardiovascular disease. There are many others. And looking at cholesterol alone won't give us a very good overall picture of heart health or the risk of having a heart attack in the future. So your doctor or another healthcare professional will likely use a tool like the Q-Risk-3 calculator to calculate the likelihood of you having a stroke or a heart attack within the next 10 years. And this tool takes into account many factors, like whether or not you smoke or drink alcohol, if you have a family history or personal history of heart disease, your weight and any other comorbidities that you may have. The higher the score, the more risk factors you have and the greater your risk for having a heart attack. I can leave a link to the tool down below if you want to try and screen yourself. But make sure if you do score high that you're not going at this alone and you're linking in with your healthcare professional. I'm gonna pause here and ask that if you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit the red subscribe button below. It really helps support my channel so I can continue making more videos like this one. And while you're at it, I would love it if you gave the video a thumbs up too. Now point number three is that some people are at a higher risk of heart disease. So if you have diabetes, you're two to four times more likely to die from heart disease than someone who does not have diabetes. Again, sorry to be grim. But what I find with my patients that are diabetic is that they really try to focus on trying to improve their blood sugar control, which is important. But then heart health and cholesterol is often pushed to a lower priority and it's more of an afterthought. But it's really important that you're making changes to look after your heart health too. Also, women that are going through or after menopause should pay higher attention to cholesterol levels. It may not have been an issue earlier in life, but after menopause, estrogen levels began to fall. And estrogen has a protective effect on the heart because it can reduce the levels of bad cholesterol in the blood. With 65% of women aged over 65 having raised cholesterol compared to 48% of men. Also, having a family history of high cholesterol puts you at higher risk. It doesn't have to mean that your destiny is sealed, but you may have to pay more attention to your diet and lifestyle than the average person. And you should have your blood cholesterol levels checked more frequently. If you don't have a family or personal history of high cholesterol, you should still be getting your blood cholesterol levels checked every four to six years, according to the American Heart Association. But I recommend if you don't know your cholesterol levels right now and you don't remember when you last had them checked, then you should probably be thinking about getting them checked because knowledge and information really is power. Now, my next point is that Yes, with cholesterol lowering advice, a lot of the focus is on reducing your saturated fat intake, which is all well and good. But when you reduce something, you obviously have to replace it with something else. And it's the combination of fats and carbohydrates that a person regularly eats that has the largest impact on blood cholesterol levels. So if you go low fat, but you have a lot of refined sugar in your diet, it's not gonna help your heart health. So instead of solely focusing on cutting out saturated fats, thinking about eating more of the right foods, is often a better approach. And then naturally it will displace some of the saturated fat. So eating more fruits, veg, and whole grains, and more plant fats like olive oil, avocados, nuts, and seeds. This is key to a cholesterol controlling diet. And the fiber in these foods can contribute to bringing down your cholesterol levels. And the healthy fats will help lower inflammation in the body, all helping to improve your heart health. Another point that I want to highlight is dairy foods like milk and yogurt shouldn't be classified alongside the saturated fat in butter and cream, as they've been shown to provide protection from heart disease. Now you can still choose low fat versions if you prefer, or if you find it helpful in managing your weight, and that will still provide the same amount of calcium and other nutrients. But it's thought that the combination of other nutrients in dairy, like calcium, potassium, and phosphate, seem to be having a protective effect 
almost counteracting the saturated fat. Now my next point is that not all blood cholesterol levels are bad. Being diagnosed with high cholesterol can be alarming. And the three numbers that you're often given for your cholesterol levels can be confusing. I have a full video on this. The three numbers that you usually see are your so-called good HDL cholesterol levels, your bad LDL cholesterol levels, and your total cholesterol. And a higher HDL cholesterol level is good for your heart health since it flushes out the bad cholesterol. But you want to keep your LDL cholesterol low because LDL cholesterol increases your risk of heart disease and stroke as its structure allows it to stick to the walls of the arteries where they can deposit and form plaque buildup. So make sure you look at the breakdown of your cholesterol results. And a lot of the focus is placed on reducing the LDL, the bad cholesterol. But there's a lot of things that we can also do to raise the good cholesterol. And we tend to forget about this. But some things you can do to help raise this are increasing your physical activity levels, particularly high intensity exercise. But all exercise is good. Getting enough omega-3 fats in your diet from oily fish is also really helpful and losing extra weight if you have weight to lose. All of these things can help with your HDL levels. My next point is about statins. Now I'm not a pharmacist, but as a dietitian, I have done many cardiac rehab sessions with pharmacists. And a big point that they always make is about taking your statins correctly. And I'm conscious for a lot of people, if they've never attended a cardiac rehab session, they may never have heard of this advice. And statins have made a tremendous impact on saving lives. But in order to be effective, they have to be taken exactly as prescribed. So if you are on statins, make sure you know when to take them and at what dose. Your pharmacist should be able to answer any questions that you have. But certain statins work better when taken with a meal and others work best when taken at night. And in general, grapefruit juice contains a chemical that can interfere with your body's ability to break down certain statins. So it should be avoided in most cases. But again, always consult with your healthcare team. My next point is there could be other things that are contributing to your higher cholesterol levels. Some medications actually raise cholesterol. So drugs used to treat other conditions like steroids or birth control can raise cholesterol levels. So make sure all of your healthcare team know about any medications that you're taking, as there may be alternative treatments that won't affect your cholesterol results that might be more suited to you. Now this isn't a mistake, but something to be aware of is that higher than normal cholesterol levels during pregnancy is not only normal, but it's essential to support the making of hormones like estrogen and progesterone. So if you're pregnant, it's not a time to be having your cholesterol levels checked or to be concerned about what they are. Have your cholesterol levels checked when you're not pregnant for a more accurate result. Now my next point is to be careful about dietary supplements that are marketed towards lowering cholesterol. Because the supplement industry is not well regulated and it can be a bit of a wild, wild west. I have a full video on the best and worst supplements to lower your cholesterol, so make sure to check that out. And there are some that do have very good evidence behind them. But some supplements like fiber supplements and turmeric supplements can interfere with medication. Turmeric supplements are safe for most people, but they may interact with blood thinners like warfarin. So always check with your doctor before taking turmeric supplements. High doses of these could have a blood thinning effect, particularly if taken on top of an anticoagulant medication. This could increase the risk of dangerous bleeding. My last point is please don't expect results too soon. If you just recently started making lifestyle changes or taking medication, it may be too early to see results. Remember, you did not develop high cholesterol overnight, so it may take some time to get back down to healthy levels. Keep working with your doctor or your dietitian. Stay consistent with your diet and follow your treatment plan to see results. Now, if you're new to the channel and this is the first video that you're seeing, I have a full video playlist on diet and cholesterol. So I'll leave that linked below so you can check out many of the other lessons. And this wraps up all of the points about cholesterol that I needed you to know. And it brings me to the end of my diet and cholesterol series. Please comment any questions that you have below and I'll do my best to get back to you. But stay tuned for my upcoming nutrition and gut health and nutrition and skin series. Thank you very much for watching. Stay happy and healthy and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.